Look at the size of Ricardo Morais. <laughs> Six foot eight. They say he's 275 pounds. I think he's more closer to 300 pounds. Yeah, I think so too. Jesus. That's an imposing figure right there. I would take uh, Louisville Slugger here in the back of my trunk. And there is Mark the Hammer Coleman, former two-time, or actually three-time UFC champion. Coleman is in with a man, and this is a very rare situation, who is outweighing him. Coleman yeah. usually outweighs his opponents. Yeah, but is he out, outpower him? I mean, Coleman is a very strong individual, and of course, Ricardo looks real strong too, but Mark got this, this special kind of strongness about him. He's got explosive strength. A lot of the American wrestlers have that because they train for the explosiveness to dominate immediately in the match, all the way through the match. Oh, wow, he, the Ricardo, he looks uh, like, like, like an evil guy from a comic book. Big and huge, like a Superman. Uh, like a, like I a want bat, Superman. Bat guy. Right, he looks like the, the villain. Yeah, a villain, for sure a villain. He should get some parts in movies. Wow, huge. Six foot eight. Coleman at six foot one is giving up seven inches in height. Coleman taking his time here. But he, uh, I'd be willing to bet Coleman is going to shoot for that single leg. What a beautiful double one that he did. Uh what we saw here in the front with Takara. Coleman ducking down to stay out of the way of those punches and then they get into the, uh, the clinch here on the ropes. Yeah, it's the place to be here. If you fight a tall guy, tall opponent, fight close. Wow, this guy's big, huh? Now, Col Coleman is a silver medalist in the Olympics in wrestling. Yeah, so that's why he probably will get the takedown. What do we know of Ricardo Moraes? Well, Ricardo Moraes, he won a 16-man, no-holds-barred tournament, the Absolute Fighting Championships number one, and that was way back, uh, February 1st, 1996 and he beat everybody within the distance. Most of the time, it was with strikes, but in the final match, he beat a Russian fighter with a rear naked choke. So he's dangerous with strikes. Okay, but he knows his submissions too. Hmm. He used to train with Henzo Gracie. A break. Okay, now that says it for me. <laughs> because Henzo Gracie has got a huge facility for ground fighting, especially submissions. Coleman lunging in, coming up short with the right hand. Yeah, there's a huge difference here in height and reach. He really needs to fight close and go for body shots once he's there. In the clinch, going for body shots. I don't know anything else to do right now. <laughs> Coleman is waiting for him to punch so he can drop down and trap the leg. That's it. That's exactly it. He wants to get him coming forward. And there it is, Coleman picking away at that single leg. And down they go. Ricardo Moraes won with a rear naked choke, but Coleman is on top. The trick is to get Coleman uh, on his back or to take Coleman's back, and I think that's gonna be a hard proposition, boss. Yeah, we've never seen it before. So, uh, no, I don't think that's gonna happen. Especially not in the new and improved Coleman. He's been training real hard now. Uh, his cardio apparently is all the way up. Okay. 
Yes, he looks like he is going for the neck crank. Ricardo Moraes seems to be relatively inactive here in the guard. Uh, but, but Coleman is extremely good at controlling people in the guard. What can Moraes do here? They're up against the ropes, but... Yeah, there's not a lot he can do because uh, Coleman tries, you see, he's constantly grabbing the back of the head. And if he starts neck cranking him, because Moraes is such a big guy, he might tap him with it, actually, because Coleman has a lot of power with it. Marais pushing straight back with the legs. Oh, side control. Yes, he got and he's oh, almost look at this. He's got him in a cradle here. Or almost. Coleman should start slugging away here. He doesn't want to leave his arm hanging like that. That's not a good idea. Coleman's got to get his head out. Should start rain punches there, right straight to the head. Perfect. Lean on his left. Perfect position for Mark Coleman. Bang, that's it. I think this is going to be a stop, don't move situation. I think you're right, and I think that's going to happen in the next 30 seconds. Oh, Coleman. Whoa. Uh, Ricardo Moraes trying to smother Coleman out of that move. Whoa. And now Moraes has Coleman's back. Coleman standing back up. Moraes trying to punch away. And that landed there. One, two punches by Ricardo Moraes. Coleman coming up short on the punches. Diving in, driving in for that single. And pulls back into Ricardo Moraes' guard in the center of the ring. Yeah, you see, a, a simple thing like a neck crank right now could work. You know that? Because his, his upper body is so tall, he can really crank it. It will open his guard. And he's got the power for it. Yeah, there it is, boss, right on cue. He's going to open the guard for sure. He has to. See? And that's the moment that he should escape. Okay, Ricardo trying to smother Coleman. Coleman going for the neck crank, but he doesn't have the inside position, so it's not going to be effective here. Nope. He's going for it again, but what he should do is grab the top of the head. He will have more leverage and it will work better. If he slams his legs down and he controls the hips, man, he can, he can even let him tap. The only thing he has to watch out for is an armbar then. Whoop, nice. Very nice, nice. He should keep doing that, it's working. Boss, let me ask you. This is the first time we've seen Ricardo Moraes fight in the Pride Fighting Championships. Do you think that it's to the point where some of these guys are so big that no one wants to fight them? Yeah, on one hand, but on the other hand, you have a lot of fighters that do want to fight them just to see if they can go the distance. You know, it's always like we saw with Emmanuel uh, Yabo against the little guy. It's, wow, look at this. Action again. He can't pass the leg now, but it's always interesting to see a big guy against a smaller guy. David and Goliath, that's what people like. And uh, the disadvantage of big people is most of the time the, uh, the stamina. And big means you have a lot of, a lot of holes to escape. Big armpits, big arms, big legs, you know, they're, they're more vulnerable than short and compact, like an Igor Fofchenchin or Arkira Soju build. Short and compact, that's better in grappling. Plus, the, the bigger people, because they're so big, it takes them a lot more energy to move their limbs, either to strike or to do submissions. Yeah. Because everything weighs more, it's, it's longer. 
Yeah, and I heard, I don't know if it's exactly true, but I hear that, uh, from what I understand, that guy probably has the same kind of long volume that I have, only he's got a total different body. But like, uh, it doesn't go by size. That's why you always see the lightweights. They keep fighting, keep fighting. That's why the light people, they're real good at running because they have, yeah, the half, the half amount of muscles that we have, but the same lung capacity. And the same heart, probably. The heart, I don't know. Maybe the heart is bigger. It should be because it's a muscle. You see Coleman pushing with his forehead to the side, or to the jaw of Marias, just to control his head. It's a typical wrestling thing. We saw it, actually, uh, Mark Kerr doing. Look at Coleman chopping there with the right hand. Yeah, on the air. Very nice. But you control the head, you control the whole upper body. He should try to pass the guy. Oh. OK, that was a, a relatively dull round. Coleman on top. Coleman doing most of the striking. So Carlson Gracie giving the instructions as Henzo Gracie is in front. So you've got, uh, you've got Brandon Lee Hinkle on one side of Mark Coleman and Coleman being toweled off by the referee. And Ricardo Moraes trying to land some shots here. That punch, that the right hand landed, but the left hook really didn't. And Coleman trying to club away with his own shots. And then Coleman shooting, going for the single, and driving in. Ricardo Moraes gives it up. There, there it is again with that right hand by Ricardo Moraes. And Coleman dropping down and going for the single. A lot of wild punches missing in that exchange. Yeah, can you imagine this guy um, being a pro boxer, like going to gym now for the next three years, uh, training two times a day pro boxing? <laughs> what a force that guy would be. Uh, yeah, he would, bec because right now it looks like that might may be the element in which he needs to work on, too. Because yeah. so, a lot of those punches miss quite a bit. Yeah, but he's got the athletic ability. He's got control over the punches. A lot of punches also had no control, but it's because he does know a lot uh, in the boxing in the area. But it comes naturally. He's boxing naturally. And he's huge. Looks like a natural to me. God knows, man. Can you imagine you fight a guy 275 pounds right. boxing? 6'6". <laughs> 6'8". Six, six. Six, Okay, right now, it's as if the fight is up for grabs. That first round was really close. Maybe Coleman had the lead, maybe he didn't, but if they want to avoid an overtime, Coleman with a nice takedown. It was off of a kick. If you, if you fight a wrestler, and I'm sure you would agree with this, boss, you don't want to lead with a kick. You want to maybe lead with some punches, then throw the kick under the punches. That's it, man. Oh, look at this. Coleman squeezing awful tight. Yeah, but what does he have? He, he yeah. doesn't have really anything, but he's, he's basically cooking Ricardo and I. He let up his grip a little bit, relaxing. If, yeah, if Ricardo wants to loosen the grip, he should, should just twist to the right, try to bridge Coleman off, and then Coleman has to post his left arm out and the grip will be gone. But there's nothing really there. Especially with the guy who trains with Hansel Gracie. Easy, baby. Nice breathing. Yeah, that's Tim Catelfo there that we hear. For what I can understand about his voice. Tim Catelfo in the corner of Mark Coleman. Tim Obaki Catelfo. Yes. From Atlanta, Georgia. There you go. Guard. Fast with the guard. There we go. You see now he got the top of the head. That's good. Higher. He should even do it higher on the head now. And Paul. And Marais really having to fight his way out. I'll tell you. 
And now he can slam Mariah's own knee. Oh no, not that. I want to say it is hat, but it's not his hat. Um, I was wrong from this position. Okay, there we go again. Neck crank. Crank it. And open it again. It's open now. Pass. Use your left elbow. Keep holding the head with your right. Push the leg off. Go half guard. I think Coleman, after he tries a couple neck neck cranks, should unload with some punches. Even if he if, if Ricardo keeps him close, I think he should try and ground upon a little more. They should um, put this um, standing back up. Yeah, I think so. I think so too because they're they're almost in a stalemate, and they've been in this, this same position for quite some time. Coleman trying for the neck crank, but Ricardo defending the neck crank, and he's got, he's got the open guard. I don't think Coleman is even concerned with the open guard. I don't. I think passing the guard is not really what he's concerned with now. I think he's concerned with squeezing him and trying for the neck crank and trying to wear him down. But you know, oh. Ricardo doesn't want to leave that arm in front of his neck like that because Coleman will get a side choke on him. Ricardo trying to sweep, and Coleman does pass the guard and gets Ricardo Moraes into the side mount. Very nice. Now he can start raining. Punches and knees to the body, punches to the head. He should definitely knee from this side. This is where the liver is located. Boss, can you judge a person's personality by their fighting style? By just watching a person fight, let's say you never met them, can you look at a guy and say, okay, this guy's a loud guy, this guy's a meek guy, this guy's an intelligent guy? Um, a lot, I, a lot I can, yeah. What kind of fighter or what kind of person is Ricardo Moraes? I think he's a, a relaxed person, a real relaxed person. Because very nice person, he probably has a nice family and everything. Something that you don't expect. Okay, now he's got Coleman in half guard and he's got that shin under Coleman's thigh, possibly wanting to sweep Coleman, but he's, he gives it up. Coleman should watch out now. He get, doesn't get turned to the other side. Uh, he's a wrestler, so that won't happen. Uh, Ricardo Moraes trying to get back up, but Coleman pinning him back down. That's his specialty, is control the man on the bottom. He should start punching now. If Ricardo is a relaxed guy, a mellow guy, what kind of guy is Coleman? I... Um, Coleman is an, uh, uh, also a, a relaxed guy, but he he gets his moments like a normal life. Then, eh? in a fight, he has always his moments. He's very, very graphic. Look at this. He's cranking, cranking, cranking. Wow, nice. That's what he should do. Now he should hit with the head up against the rope. What but, I s but he can unleash that uh, that aggressive power. Yeah, what I see in Coleman, and, and this is a difference between, I think, these two guys, is Coleman is probably a quiet guy, but he's got this explosive, passionate side of himself. Now, when he goes to that neck wow. break, look at the look in his face. Oh, yeah. Look at the body shots here, now. And, and, yeah, he, he's getting busy. Because I think Camo uh, Coleman, his emotions can bring him to the, the top of his heights, but like when he fought Maurice Smith, his emotions betrayed him because he went out there a little too emotional 
and put too much energy into the fight and, and lost his win. Yeah. So I think he's learning that middle ground between, be, between being emotional and being relaxed like Ricardo Moraes. Whereas Ricardo Moraes, on the other hand, I would like to see him get a little more emotional in, in this fight. I'd like to see, see him, if he, if he was in a desperation situation, he might explode a little more. Yeah, we, we saw it at the beginning, in the first round. We saw him um, a few times, the explosions with Mark, and then the nice sprawls, the nice takedown defense. Look at this. Look at this. I'm telling you, man. I, I think... Wow. I think there has never been a fight where Coleman did not give 100%. Yeah, that's true. I just want to make a, uh, a remark about this. If he does, if Mark does the neck crank, he should bring his hips down to the ground. Don't sit on his hips. Or push his knees all the way forward over the ground so that he automatically pulls his body backwards. It sounds strange when I say it like this, but it works. Shoves his knee over the ground upwards. That will bring his body backwards. And then together with the neck pulling, it might work. Well, Ricardo Moraes is getting a lot of different instructions yell, yelled at him from his corner, but he, he, hasn't, he hasn't really done anything except for lay here in the guard and try to counter the neck crank for the last, let's say, five to seven minutes. Yeah, you might as well try something. Bring your leg over or bring it higher on Coleman's chest. Maybe he goes for a half guard and then you can try to, to escape him. Try something. But I've been in this position under Mark Kerr when we were training, and um, I, I have to tell you it's very... It's very difficult to escape a guy like Mark Kerr or like Mark Coleman. And, uh, but you try. You have to try. You have to work and do something. This way he's going to lose the fight. He's going to skip down the hip. I thought he was going to go for armbar maybe, but he's not. Yeah, he, ha he has to move more. There you go. Pressure. Don't bother falling down. Do it I wouldn't exactly call either one of these guys a versatile fighter. A versatile? Versatile. No. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You mean one-dimensional? Yeah, I mean, Ricardo Moraes has got the guard, but he really doesn't, hasn't really done much with the guard. He's almost getting to the position where he can flip Coleman, but as we said before, wow. Coleman, Coleman gets the mounted position. Oh, no, he should go around the neck. He should go around the neck. There is nothing there. That would be, but he might be smothering uh, Ricardo Moraes' face up against his chest. Yeah, but, but Ricardo it, could flip him over. That's See, it. There it is. And but he didn't flip him over. No, Look but, at that control. But, it, but that's why I say never ever. It's the first lesson I give to my students: grab your arms around the neck. Coleman, he's he starting to, to land punch. those punches. He's starting to land the punches now. Things he, are finally heating up in this battle of the behemoths. Yeah. <laughs> Two Godzillas. He should start. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the fight. Uh, yeah, it's not going to go to an overtime. I think that uh, Coleman is going to win the fight. I think Coleman's going to win the fight. He, he's just going to barely inch this one out. Wow. But he, just did, he just did a little bit more than Ricardo Rice just almost did nothing in that last round except for scoot his hips to the side one time. He didn't try for submission. He barely threw a punch. He actually looks like Stefanos a little bit, huh? Stefanos Mokakis, yeah. one of Hicks and Gracie's students, and also one of Rob Common's students, the famous uh, Muay Thai kickboxer from Holland. Yes. And Mark the Hammer Coleman gets a real close and uh, uh, gets a methodical workmanlike victory over Ricardo Morais. Coleman is now back in the winner's circle. And there's Tim Catalfo, Kevin Randleman, Brandon Lee Hinkle. And his father, this was Coleman's father. Oh, the, 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 cap. the fourth guy, right. I couldn't believe it when they said, I said, whoa. <laughs>
such a huge guy. Coleman wow. is. What a great victory for Coleman. There he is hugging Tim Catalfo. Tim Obaki Catalfo. Let's have a round of applause for Mark the Hammer Coleman.